I'm going to record this so that um, uh, so that you can look at it later, and also the people who aren't here can hear it. So why don't you guys come on, come forward, come forward, come forward. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go through um, your exercise for this week and make sure that you're um, appropriately prepared for it. Um, how many people have started the transform exercise for um, a complex BC BC resort? Nobody, huh? Okay. Well, um, you, in general, you'd be well served by at least trying those before you come, so that you have lots of questions. Um, so probably you'll come back and you'll you'll want to come back to this discussion later. Hold on just a second. I'll be right with you. Did you ask? Did you ask? Uh, we're basically going to be doing what Bob did earlier in class. Where he um, website has anybody started the project for this week, so which is the transform the for the complex BC resort stuff? The so I want to get you started with that, and hold on just a second, and I will. So you guys are all on transform, and you did the instance and the schema for this project, right? And then today you did the instance and schema for this project, and today you're go or this week you're going to do the transform. So you did get started. And well, you have a question. Barely. I read it through when I just started. Uh, and I have a question about um, where you say, OK, now do these steps. And you kind of say something like, well, add the tags into. Right, I'm going to go through I'm going to go through that step by step right now to kind of get you guys started. OK, because yeah, that was a bit fuzzy. I really okay. what that meant. Right, yes. OK, good. So the method I'm going to give you here is a really good method for, um, hold on just a second, for Creating a, <laughs> creating a transform that duplicates a page format. So we know what the page format is, right? I give you a sample of this page format, and here it is. This is what we're looking for. And in fact, um, uh, it's the same as the sample file that I gave you earlier. Uh, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this one. So you're familiar already with this page because it's the one that is yeah. it's the one that you started from when you were modeling. So now we want to go back to it. So here's the methodology. <clears throat> I'm going to create a really simple transform. And all that simple transform is going to do is literally recreate this page. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to create a transform. It's going to have a single template in it. And inside that template is going to be all the HTML code to create this page. Okay, that's a really dumb transform. It's doing nothing. All it's doing is pumping out all the HTML that creates this page. And then step by step, I'm going to remove the HTML and put in XSL commands that then will step by step replace things like the title and then the, um, the tagline and then the, the, um, then the description and then finally down to you know, the harder stuff like you know, all of the statistics. So step by step, I'm going to remove stuff from the HTML version of the page and add it to the XSLT as a set of commands. So let me walk you through that. It's really not hard, and it's really a, it's really a good tool to have in your back pocket for being able to quickly take whatever, say, prototype page. I feel like a little kid. <laughs> C is way down, and I can't make it come up. So I'll just have to be a little kid. All right. So you can no longer look up to me. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to now, I'm going to do this exercise. And first of all, looking at the page in an HTML browser does not do much for me. Very, very little does it do for me. I want to look at that page in an XML browser. And this is my, um, let's see, Complex BC Resort, I think. Is it, it's not that one. It's Complex BC Resort starter.html, right? Uh, whoops. Hold on a second. Study this file. It's called starter file. Okay, it should be the last one under the model. I think it's cold. Uh, no, I think it's cold. This is the excess. Oh, I guess it is. All right. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of errors inside of here. So yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're errors, but they're not, they're not important errors. They're errors where it's looking at the HTML tags and saying, I don't recognize that HTML tag, which is just fine. So I'm going to look at this complex BC Resort HTML not as an HTML file. I'm going to look at it as an XML file. And I can take any XML file and put it inside of my transform, right? Because it's just more XML. So here I have all of these tags. 
This is not a transform file right now, it's an HTML file, but because it's XHTML, meaning that it behaves according to the rules of if you open a tag, you have to close it, etc., I can use it as XML, and that's going to really help me. So I have two things to start from. Here's all of my formatting, but the problem with all of my formatting is that it includes all the content as well. Here's not all, but quite a few of the commands that I'm going to need in, in order to do the transform. And I do that because I don't want you to start from a blank slate. I want you to start from a set of commands that are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting inside your transform so that you're not jetted right into the middle of transform land without anything to hold on to. What's in this commands file, which you can download as well from that same page, is lots of commands that you're going to need. So if you don't end up using one of these commands, something's gone wrong. Right, this is again, this is the puzzle metaphor. This says that I give you a lot of pieces and you gotta glue those pieces together. Yeah. Where did you put the exercise for them? It's on the I think it's on today's the web page for today. Yeah, which is in schemas. It's not appearing in the last article. Did it end up only in the more technical? Okay, so you know what? You only you need to see the exercise. So you can just log in as a more technical and then um, and then tell them what to do. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so um, so, in, but instead of giving you every XSL command, I've only given you the ones that are particularly that you might have a particularly hard time coming up with, and you're, you need to glue them together with other XSL commands. So instead of it being like the first exercise where I gave you all the tag names, you just had to fit them all together, it's I gave you most of the hard commands, and you got to use all of these commands, but you also have other commands that you're going to write yourself. Okay, so let me get you started with this. First step. Yeah, new do, um, style sheet, XSL. And we'll, we'll use version one in this class. That's all we're going to need. OK, so there's a blank style sheet. Notice it has no templates in it, just a style sheet tag. Yeah. So is this part of that step-by-step? That this, this is the step-by-step, step step. Step, right? Step one, create a new style sheet. Step two, add the template that you're going to see over and over again in this class. Match what? forward slash, match the root node, okay? So that's basically the minimum amount of stuff that goes in a template. We don't actually have to have that match forward slash, but in most cases, 99% of the cases in this class, we're going to have match forward slash. Now it's going to do all the things that a template does. I'm going to start off really simple. I'm going to take all of this junk right here, and I'm just going to paste it right in there. See what I just did? I took an entire HTML page and I pasted it between the open and close tags of the template match. Okay, so you can see that, right? All of that HTML tag with all of its children, exactly as it is in the sample file, is now in my XSL file. The reason I do that is I want to start from something that reproduces the page perfectly. And then I'm going to remove content and put in commands and continue to reproduce that page perfectly. But the key thing here, and the thing that will really, really help you throughout this entire course and throughout your entire career is always be really close to something that works. Right? What a lot of you would be tempted to do is, I'm going to take all of those XSL commands, I'm going to throw them into this template, I'm going to start running it, and it's just going to be a miserable mess because you're not taking a methodical approach. And especially when you're trying to reproduce somebody else's design, you want to make sure that you capture all of that design without, ha without, you know, without messing with it. Don't mess with any of the divs, for example. All of those are part of the design of the page. They're not part of the content. So I'm never going to delete a div in here. The divs are all part of the layout of the page. OK, so that was step one, I think, and it was also step two of pasting the HTML file <laughs> completely into this XSL. OK, now I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it as the file that I'm going to upload. File management is also kind of an issue in this class because there's lots of files and they have to be named precisely to be uploaded. So this one is called, I think, complexbcresort.xsl without the words commands. OK, so now that I have what ought to be a working file, right? There's nothing, there's no, notice no syntax errors here. It's a working XSL. It doesn't do anything. But it's a working XSL. All it does is pump out that same HTML code that I put in there. 